Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at ionic compounds. Now I've got some pictures here of ionic compounds, things that we use on a daily basis, like our toothpaste, which has sodium fluoride, we have table salt, we have Epsom salts, which some people use when their muscles get sore, um, and then also a little joke. Hopefully you'll come back at the end of the video, take a look at this joke, and see if you understand it. So we have three learning goals here today. The first is to identify ionic compounds from their names and formulas. The next is to determine the name of an ionic compound from its formula, and to determine the formula of an ionic compound from its name. So first of all, our ionic bonds, the characteristic of ionic bonds is that electrons are transferred from a metal to a non-metal. The metal becomes positively charged the non-metal becomes negatively charged and those negative and positive charges are attracted to each other and so that's what makes the compound stick together. So here we have a metal and a non-metal. Electrons are transferred from the metal to the non-metal. The metal becomes positively charged and we call um, ions that are positively charged, we call them cations. The non-metal becomes negatively charged and ions that are negatively charged are referred to as anions and then the cation and anion are attracted together to bring the compound together. So here are the rules for writing formulas for ionic compounds. Now I will, you can choose if you'd like to write these down or I'll show you just a little schematic, another version, another way of looking at it. It's up to you. If you want to write these down, just pause the video and write them down, but I'm not going to list and go through all the steps right now. So here's another way of looking at it. You would write the formula for the metal, the symbol for the metal. You write how many of that metal you need, and you would use either the zero sum or crossing over method. You would write the symbol for the non-metal, and then how many of that you need using either the zero sum or crossing over methods. So let's take a look at an example. We have sodium sulfide. So sodium is our metal, and it has the symbol Na and it has a positive charge, a one positive charge. And we know that if we look at the periodic table, it's in the first column on the left, and those elements, when they become ions, they have a one positive charge. Now if you haven't watched the video yet on how to determine the charges on um, ions, so when an atom becomes an ion, please watch that video first. I'll put a link in the description box below. Our sulfide, that comes from the word sulfur, so that's the symbol S. And sulfur has a two negative charge because it's the third from the right on the periodic table. And we know from the pattern that those uh, elements gain a two negative charge when they become ions. So we have two methods that we can use. You can choose whichever you prefer. I'm going to show you both for all of the examples, but you only need to copy down the one that you're interested in. So let's start off with the zero sum method. So oops. So here sodium has a one plus charge and sulfur has a negative two charge. If we add those together, we end up with negative one. We're always aiming for the answer zero, so we don't quite have it yet. But if we had two of the one plus charges and we added those to the negative two charge, we would end up with zero. So that means we need two sodiums and we need one sulfide ion. So we know how to write our formula once we know how many of each we need. The number of each uh, atom or each ion that we need goes as a subscript. So sodium we need two, so we write subscript two after the sodium. And sulfur we need one. We don't write subscript ones, we just leave them blank. So it will be Na2S. Let's try the crossing over method. So sodium has a one plus charge, and the sulfide ion has a two negative charge. If we cross over, so we'll start off by writing the symbols next to each other, this one plus charge goes here to sulfur, and we don't write subscript one, so we just leave it blank, and then the two negative charge of sulfur comes over to the sodium, and we write the two there. So our answer is Na2S. And we can see that both methods gave us the same answer. Let's take a look at another example, potassium nitride. Potassium is our metal, and it has the symbol K. 
and potassium takes a 1 plus charge based on its position in the periodic table. Nitride comes from the word nitrogen, so we know that's the symbol N, and based on its position in the periodic table, it takes a 3 negative charge. So let's try our two methods here. Potassium has a 1 plus charge, and we add that to the negative 3, we'll end up with negative 2. To get 0, if we had 3 of the potassiums, and we added that to the nitrogen, that would give us zero. So we need three of the potassium ions and one of the nitride ions. So we can write that as K with a subscript three, since we need three of them, and then N for nitrogen, and we don't put any subscript because we don't write our subscript ones. If we try our crossing over method, here we'll write the two symbols beside each other. The 1 plus from potassium comes over to nitrogen. We don't write subscript 1, so we leave that blank. And then the charge of 3 negative from nitrogen comes over to the potassium, and we write that as a subscript 3. So we end up with K3N. Again, the same uh, formula using the two methods. And now we'll look at naming ionic compounds. So again, if you'd like to pause the video and write these rules down, you can do that, or you can go based on the schematic. So here you would write the name of the metal, you would write the stem of the name of the non-metal, and we'll look at what those stems look like in a minute, and you would add the suffix I-D-E at the end. So you take off the ending of the original term, and we just write the stem, and then we add IDE to make a new ending. So let's take a look here. Magnesium and chlorine are the two elements that we're dealing with. The metal gets its normal name, and the, the non-metal, the chlorine, we just use the stem. So chlorine, the stem is chlor, we get rid of the I-N-E, and we would add an IDE. So magnesium stays as it is, chlorine turns to chlor, and then we add the IDE. Let's look at another example. We have aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum is our metal, which will stay the same, and oxygen is our non-metal. Oxygen, the stem is ox, so we'll get rid of the igen and just leave ox, and then we'll add the final suffix IDE. So we end up with aluminum oxide. So that's how we would form these types of compound names. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to identify ionic compounds from their names or formulas. So recognizing that there's a metal and a non-metal put together. Determine the name of an ionic compound from its formula and determine the formula of an ionic compound from its name. If you can do these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.